Hi guys, here from KEC, uh, here in South Shields, I'm joined by Kerry Griffiths. This is South Shields? <laughs> you told me it was Vegas, you lied to me. <laughs> Hi guys, and as you can see we're on new face. Yes. I've got a sidekick today. Hello, yeah, Katie. so I'm new to the team, um, I'm Katie, um, I'm the new digital marketing assistant. And my sidekick. We seem to have missed that one. She'll be cleaning up afterwards. So, yes. what are we going to do today, Katie? Well, lots. Lots. <laughs> um, um, so, I'm going to start off with the continuous quilt mould. Okay. Now, the reason I asked to put this one in is, when we first launched it, I demonstrated it on a round cake. Yes. And it has been exceedingly popular. And thank you, guys. You have done cakes with this mould that I couldn't even imagine. And <laughs> some of the work out there, I mean, if you... Just look at some of the samples flying around. You've done some amazing stuff. Thank you. It just proves I did it right in the first yeah. place. However, um, I did it on a round cake. And after we'd done the launch, I came to play and went, you can do this on the square cake. So I made a little video of my own, which only went as far as my social reach could go. So I thought, it's probably time to share with you. There are a couple of hints and tricks to actually do a square cake with this. You can do a rectangular cake with it as well. You just need to think about the math when you do it, and I'll explain that as we go along. Um, and I thought, why not? Let's look at something a bit like a quilted parcel today. Yeah. We'll do that, and then we'll go into my new favorite range, which is the Flower Pro range. Yes. And yes, we've got offers for you and yes America we've not forgotten about you <laughs> yeah. either so okay so I have about this much work and about this much time to do it in so I'm going to speed along and good old Katie here and now is going to kick me in the shin and go I need to talk so yeah. if she does I'll go over to her because Katie will have all the information for you whereas I'll have all the skills and techniques so first of all what we're looking at is, I've started the cake already because obviously you don't want to spend all that time looking at me doing the cake. So I'm going to try and do at least most of the cake, if not complete it. And as you can see, I want to talk about this area here because this is the secret to doing a square or rectangle. And also you need to make sure that when you've done your cake, you have an equal number of spikes on one side as you do to the opposite side. Because if you don't, when you put the insert piece onto the top, it's not going to work. So let's put that one to one side and we're going to just have a little look at the original mold. Now we have the continuous quilting mold here and I did it in a smaller size. Yes. The mini. I did the little mini one which I'm not using today but it has proved really popular with the cupcake and cookie um, participants out there which is exactly what I used it for and also I tend to cut little plaques and put them on the front of wedding cakes and then enhance those with maybe dragees or a small bead border so I'm happy with it and this one as I said is the continual quilting mold now it's continuous because you can add panels in any direction and cover any size space so if you look at it this way you can do a three inch tall cake and a four inch tall cake you look at it this way, you could do a five inch tall cake, a six inch tall cake. But if I got one piece and then added another piece to the top, I can do a 14 inch tall cake. So basically that's where the idea of continuous came in and it should all link in. Also, when you have the piece of paste out of it, because the paste, and this is obviously the mold I'm handling, it will stretch slightly. So if you're worried that is it gonna meet at the back, the most it's gonna be off is one of those little diamonds. And one of those little diamonds is one inch square. And believe me, you can just give it a little bit of a stretch and it will all come together beautifully. So how do I do this? How do I do this? Um, <laughs> I am not using just regular fondant or sugar paste. I have added some Tylos powder to this. Um, and by Tylos powder, I would say that there's a set measurement for Tylos powder into it. And I did make a video about adjusting paste um, or modified paste. However, since that video, I have found that Tylos powder or CMC powder does come in a very different strengths. Yeah. So where I said, I think it was either five to 10 grams per kilo, I would say start with five grams for maybe 500 grams of paste and then see whether it's tight meaning it's firm or it's still soft yeah. if it's still too soft and sticky add a pinch more if you find it's too firm for you add a bit more of the original mm -hmm. fondant sugar paste um, I have made a video and I know chef Nicholas Lodge has a product out there he calls modified paste yeah. and his recipe works as well but be aware Tylos or CMC powder does come in different strengths, which yes. I apologise for. I wasn't really aware when I started. Well, we do sell it on our website, the Tylo powder. Ooh, and, um, you've got it back in stock, yeah. 
Yes. Wow, okay. I'll um, be ordering some of that for go home. So, um, so anyway, I've started with, I've got 170 grams of the modified or adjusted paste for the large one. If you're using the small one, it's approximately 70 grams. Now that is a measurement just to give you a starting point for this. Once you've rolled it out, after you've cleaned it up, you're probably going to remove about 20 grams of that. But if I said it's 130 grams, you'd never get it to fit. Yeah. There's always that little variant. As far as preparing my mold, I'm going to take a little bit of white vegetable fat, only a little tiny bit, and I just wipe it into the mold. I don't really want to see it, but I want it to be able to release at the end of the day. Now, a lot of you are probably going to ask me, why am I not using cornstarch, icing sugar, or corn powder? Um, the reason for that is because the white vegetable fat will grip the paste slightly, which will prevent it moving, whereas corn flour or cornstarch or icing sugar means it will move in the mold and you might get a double impression. Okay? Another reason I like using white vegetable fat is when I take it out, it's got a thin film of fat on. So if I was going to luster it to give it a sheen or a shine or a pearlize it, the dust has something to stick to. However, if you're not going to do that, the white vegetable fat would actually absorb straight into the paste over about half an hour anyway. So start with a rectangle of the paste, take your rolling pin, any rolling pin, and just roll it out or pin it out to approximately the dimensions of the mold, not the cavity, the actually mold. So I will do this for you. Now I'm working on a non-stick board and as you can see I'm not adding more icing sugar or anything underneath it. You can if you've got a surface that's, that's not working with you. So there you go. So it's roughly the same size. Places to look for are make sure the corners are squared off because that's where you're going to find, as you can see there, the paste always is rounded because you've been rolling it from a rounded shape to start with. Once I've done that, I take a little bit of cornstarch. You could use icing sugar for this. If it's being sandwiched up against buttercream, I would probably say use cornstarch or corn flour because if you're using cornstarch and you put it up against buttercream, you could potentially get um, fermentation, the mold might grow and it might blow, but that's, that's a catering thing, believe me. It's not likely to happen, but I err on the side of caution and I do use food safe practices. So I've dusted it. Now coming back to the mold, I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna anchor the paste down into the mold. What I'm doing with this is I'm using my fingers to get it nice and firm into all of that detail that we spent weeks creating in the mold so it doesn't shift around. Once I've done that, I'm going to come in and I'm going to press it into the sides. Then I'm going to use the pad of my thumb and just swipe off the excess. Now, you could use a plastic craft knife if you didn't fancy doing this. I wouldn't recommend using a metal knife on any molds. And the reason is that molds are not cheap. And you don't want to be cutting it because the moment you've cut it with a knife, what's going to happen is you're going to mar the mold and you'll never be able to use it properly again. Now, Katie Sue molds are made here in Britain, designed in Britain because that's where I live. Um, they're food safe. They are dishwasher safe. Uh, they can go in the oven if you wanted to melt a product into it, although I'm not yeah. sure what product you would melt in it. Um, I know some people put ice malt into these things and boiled sugar, which is equally good to do. Now, as you can see, around here, we've got a rough edge. So I'm going to do some housekeeping. I'm going to support the paste and push these in. So, what are we going to be looking at for the rest of this show, Katie? Uh, well, um, we've got the Ultimate Flower Pro Collection, which uh, a lot of you will, will have already seen on our Facebook page. Okay. Um, and it just arrived in the US uh, just the other day. And we're so it's really, still there. Yeah, it's well, very popular just. though, so <laughs> there is a limited stock. I know yes. I sound like a cracked record, but press the button. Seriously, and how, yeah, how do really people purchase? How, how do they purchase the stuff in America? Um, well, it's just all on our website. So the US is katiesuesigns.us.com. <laughs> uh, you're a challenger or something. Is, is there a but little all the links the will be in the Facebook. Is there a flag yes. for a Britain in America site still? Yeah, so if you're in the America site, it will prompt you to go into the um, English site if you're in England. It'll prompt you to go into the America. Yeah, so it, it is are. quite easy. And of course, all of the prices are then are in, in the relevant currency to the current, yes. current remember, country you are in. Okay, right. Let's just put that... And they will arrive by Christmas. Yes, now, they will. we were saying about the Flower Pro range being limited stock already. Um, 
If you are ordering that, it will get to you by Christmas if it sells out in the meantime. Now, before I do that, I'm not pressing on my rolling pin. I'm just gently rolling it across the top just to flatten the back out a little bit. There you go. Now, with the Flower Pro in America, if you order it and it's existing stock, it will arrive by Christmas. Yes. If you get to the point where we're sold out, which is incredibly likely, yeah. um, email the customer service team, I think it's info. Info at katiesudesigns.com. And let them know, and then they will notify you when it's back in. But to be honest with you, we can't keep the stock in the warehouses. It is that popular, and it's wonderful that it is. Yes. So, I've tidied up all of the edges, done my housekeeping, I've flipped the mold over, and then I'm gonna pull it back Peel it back. Ta -da, Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> and what we've done is I've made this paste of a depth that it actually represents the fondant or the sugar paste you will put around the cake. So you could attach this to a thin skin of buttercream on your cake. You could have a ganache cake and just spritz it with some water and attach it directly on. But as you can see, because of the tireless powder, I can lift it up and move it around. As I was saying, there is a little bit of stretch, so I can stretch it in, I can stretch it out in all different directions. So if I do have a cake that's just slightly not true on one side to the other, I can give it a bit of a stretch either way. So moving on. Let's put that there. Now, when I look at the cake, let's tip this on its side. We're taking our chances here. You need to know what the distance is there up to the top edge. And the way I do that is I tend to offer up my piece of paste and do that. Now, I can see that I now need to take the very bottom one off. And I will do that. My favorite bit of equipment is a pizza wheel, as you all know, or anyone who knows me knows that I live with my pizza wheel. So let's take that bit off. Ta -da. So now if I come back in and I put this up, I can now see that it fits in. Or it would if I'd have cut the right bit off. Have you ever had one of those days, Katie? <laughs> really? I woke up with a headache this morning. I knew it was not going to be good. So let's just hope I've done it right. This time I'll probably cut it too short. But I do have a backup plan. There you go. So as you can see, they marry up perfectly and I want the top edge to be able to curl around the top. So I'm now going to put this flat because I need to do the next bit flat. Now, you do have a choice. If it was buttercream, you wouldn't need to put anything to stick it on because the buttercream should be the thing that sticks yes. stick the paste to the cake. If it's ganache, I'd probably spritz it or just brush it with a little bit of water just so it gets that stickiness. You don't want it so wet that it slides around. With this, because I've already covered my cake in sugar paste or fondant, purely because this is a demonstration, I'm going to come in and I'm going to take a little bit of edible glue. Now, you could use just water, but I would say use water sparingly. You can make edible glue out of the Tylos or the CMC powder. If you were to look, there are plenty of recipes online. Basically, I just get some warm, warm water in this little pot and I do a pinch or two of the CMC into it. And there we are, it's done. So I've done that on there. Now, as I said, when we're looking at the cake, let's move that down a bit so I'm bringing it, the important bit is here. So you're gonna to have to have two of these points are gonna to have to come together and marry to create that straight line. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna lift my piece up, gonna slot it into the previous ones, come around the corner. Now just put it in place there. And then as you can see, I'm just gonna pull these two points over and then I'm gonna work my way along and gently curve the top bits over. Take a little bit of time to do this, probably a little bit more time than I'm doing, but then you've got the comfort of your own home to work in. Um, if you see it here on the side, just give it a little bit of a stretch and you will disguise any join perfectly. It's gone. Okay, so you just need to use the place to do that. I come around there. Now, how am I doing for time? Right. Um, you would continue around this corner. Now, obviously, that's not that's not a whole piece. I would just cut it to measure. But what you need to remember is when you finish the whole cake, you need the same amount of inserts there as they are there because the panel needs to drop into the top. So, in my total Blue Peter moment, I made one earlier. <laughs> I do have a Blue Peter bat. I'll have you know. Yes, I do. You should have worn it. <laughs> <laughs> if I could find it. Now, as you can see here, that then fits perfectly into that square. So you then just give it a little bit of a stretch and you marry up all of the points. 
all the way along and then you will find that eventually you can cover the top. You would have to trim this obviously with a knife to make sure that you've got the right amount of points all the way along. But this is how I then worked on getting one. If you do have the old square, you can also cut a square and just fill it in. So that was how I did it. The important bit, as I said, is this is what you need to remember, is these corners. If the corners are square, they work for that square. When you come along the cake, you may need to trim just to fit it in, but that's how it was done. So, enough of my quilting mold. <laughs> Buy one now, because they're amazing. Yeah. They're, really, they are just absolutely amazing. So let's put that one to one side. Yeah, so the continuous quilt mold is $19.99 on the UK site. That's a giveaway. And you want that to check the US. And it's $24.99 on the US site. That's even more of a giveaway. <laughs> I have to have a word with a certain person in charge. So, okay, so now we're going to look at Flower Pro. So what is in this wonderful kit that you've been Oops. telling me about? <laughs> so this is a really great um, Christmas present um, for someone who loves Flower Pro. So um, you get a presentation case, you get ferns mould. That's not fern, that's multi-leaf. E, sorry, yes. So you just can't get the star. <laughs> uh, multi-leaf mould, every flower needs a leaf. Now this is not going to do every single possible leaf out there, but you know what, it does the majority of them that have got a central vein, and believe me, the amount of detail they've managed to put yes. in here, Chef Nicholas Lodge has done a really, really good job with this. It's a really good multi-use, must-have yes. veiner. Um, it does have a central vein down there, so when you fit a wire into it, the wire actually has somewhere to go, and I will be showing you how to use this in a few minutes. So you've got the multi-veiner for the leaves. Yeah, uh, rose cones. Rose cones. Okay, now a lot of you when you make roses or flowers will probably use styrofoam balls for the center of your roses or you'll use gum paste and just roll it into a form. Yeah. This makes things uniform. By being able to make the rose cones in the three different sizes, you know then they are the correct sizes for the three different cutters that you'll be generally using, um, which I believe off the top of my head may be a 75 mil, a 90 mil, and 110 mil. Tell me that's right. I don't know. <laughs> you'll have to say yes, Karen, it's right. <laughs> yes. And I, she can be trained. Um, so know that it all, all of this links quite cleverly together. Again, I will show you how to make one of those. Yeah, and then the ultimate filler flowers. Now, I'm probably going to need help with this one. I think when I last spoke to Nick, he said there was 21 different flowers he could make from this, and he was still counting. Yeah. So, believe me, it's absolutely essential, this yes, one, definitely. just for the filler ones. I mean, we always focus on the big flowers and the leaves and all decorate, and we forget that, you know, sometimes it's a little cluster a little of ones. something fills in a gap yeah. and in here is trapped down there so I'll pull the one I'm out using is this little gadget and um, this is actually where let's put it over there you can see it better um, it's called the flower pro companion although I used to call it the Nick stick and that was a far <laughs> favorite of mine but Nick laughed about it but we decided it had to be called a companion tool um, it's like a really mini ball and needle tool you will use it a lot yes. it comes as part of this mold anyway very useful bit of kit just for picking things up hollowing things out so we'll see that in action as we go along next come next. on katie show me what uh, you've got ultimate petal veiner okay um double-sided ultimate petal veiner created originally for roses however um i've done peonies out of this and because it's got such beautiful texture of veining on it actually let's pull one that's not in the packaging it's got all of this nice section. You could put pretty much any petal you wanted yeah. on there to actually transfer the veining onto a piece of paste. Um, I've actually done peonies with this as well. So very, very useful. Another great thing about this, it's got a unique advantage that when you see me create one of these roses, I can thread the wire right through the middle to actually support the other petals to build it. And Nick has been very clever in that he's put the instructions actually around the edge of the vein to tell you which petals in which order to go on because I can't count past four. <laughs> I used to be a dancer. Five, six, seven, eight, those are the only numbers I knew. <laughs> One, two, three, four, total mystery to me. There you go. And last but not the least, ferns. The, <laughs> not fern, the leaves. The not ferns. the leaves. You're off to botanical college later. <laughs> um, the fern, the fern mold. Now, I love this fern mold. I mean, as I can show you, let's pull one of Nick's pieces in. 
Okay, if we can go to an overhead for this, these ferns on the end of here just are the little element you're looking for. We always use leaves and berries, yeah. but to actually have a fern on the end, it's so much more lifelike. Yeah. And for those who actually do air drying clay and porcelain work, you could actually make keepsake corsages, buttonholes that say for a wedding event or maybe table event. You could then take these home with you Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I highly recommend it. I haven't personally seen another uh, fern mold that works in this manner or that actually creates the ferns as well as this. So I won't be making one later, but I will certainly talk your way through it just, just so we can see it in action. Okay. Yeah, and then... And then, oh, not the green pad. <laughs> the green pad. The green pad. See, I've already got a green pad. One of Nick's favourites. Nick's favourite. Um, <laughs> Green pad for frilling, thinning, um, with two, two different intensities. This is a firmer side, the darker side is a softer, I believe. I'm probably going to get Nick on eBay in a minute go, um, on Facebook going, Kerry, you got it wrong. <laughs> one is softer, one is firmer. Absolutely essential bit of kit, great for traveling, and everything's in its carry pack. So whoever receives this as a gift, it's a one off. They've got it, it's yeah. all in there. And the green pad is limited um, in the Flower Pro kits <gasps> as well. So it's How first come first serve. Stuff? <laughs> it's fine, it really is. Evidence. Um, and then, finally, the uh, book, Flower Pro book. The Flower Pro, now. Which has everything you need to know. Nick wrote this as he developed all of this. So you've got complete step-by-step -step on every single flower that we were making at the time. Since that book, we've now discovered more flowers. So there's probably going to be another one of these in the future. <laughs> at the back, you will get, completely free included, Nicholas Lodge's size chart. And you will find that absolutely essential when you do his process because he's made a pile of YouTubes for Katie Sue as well to show and demonstrate how each of them is done. So not yes. only do you have his written support, you physically have him on screen should you have any problems struggling and go, I don't understand the written word, just watch it. Yeah. There's and also it, a, sorry, there's also a Flower Pro group on Facebook. Which oh yeah, is, Flower um, Pro as well. Really great for inspiration and advice. Isn't that over 5,000 members now or something? Something like that. I'm not sure. Oh, you need to do research. <laughs> no. There's a lot of people yes, on this group. Yes, it is. So, um, and uh, Nicholas Lodge also. Uh, oh, he comments. always jumps on and off all of the time. Yeah. You can't keep Nick away from flowers. <laughs> no. So, this is a very comprehensive pack. Now, if you're someone who already does flowers, I understand you've probably already got veiners. But you know what? This is a one-hit multi-use multi veiner set so it's for lots of things it's not flower specific so think of that as a starting block also if you've got someone who's just dabbling going "Ooh, do i do i not this is a great way as i said they've got over 21 flowers in the filler flower mold at least you've then got roses and the roses could be done with peonies as well then you've got the multi-leaf veiner so that i've used that for hydrangea leaves rose leaves generic leaves if you do multicolored pacing you could do other sorts of leaves in it as well you've got the fern which is obviously unique to the range at the moment you've got the instructions you've got the companion tool you've got the foam pad you've got nicholas lodge and ktc designs as a support team behind you with both written and visual support yeah and so the you, youtube videos are really great they and ian knows what he's doing he does. <laughs> so if you received that at christmas you would be ecstatic if you're someone who's starting out or someone who's already established yeah. go, you know what, I'm going on holiday. I can just pick this up and take it with me and I can work in the hotel room. Or as <laughs> I'm, I'm normally working in a hotel room. Or uh -huh. I can, if say I'm going to a chalet in France, just take this so when you're not doing anything in the yeah. evening, just have a play. So. Yes, so this is £75, um, which has a saving uh, of one second. <laughs> we made 12, it like that one down. <laughs> Twelve pound ninety four, uh, ninety four, um, on this pack, which is basically the ferns mold for free. Yep. Um, and, and in the USA, which is available but very limited um, stock, it is eighty nine, eighty nine dollars in the That's US. That's not bad. And when you reckon in here, you've got a pile of molds and veiners. Now, if you look at what a veiner normally costs, if you did the math. This is a good deal, guys. Yeah. So go for it. So let's have a play anyway. You can hold that up occasionally and go, buy me, buy me, limited stock, limited stock. 
Okay, we're on it. Right, where did I say I was starting? Okay, let's go into um, the first mould. Now, I'm not going to do all 21 of them because I don't know about you, but I need to eat lunch somewhere and there's a cup of tea <laughs> and I probably need a bathroom visit. Um, out of here, we've done, gosh, uh, Baby's Breath, we've done Maiden Hair, we've done bluebells, we've done hyacinths, we've done lavenders, we've done lilacs, we've got hydrangeas, we've done snowdrops, with forget-me-nots, um, God, nicotinas in there, we've done jasmines, and those are just the ones that this humble little brain can remember. But one of the things I really love about this, for those of you out there at the moment working within the cakey world, you will find that it's very on trend to do hydrangeas. And this has got a cute little hydrangea center on it, which I'm going to show you how to use. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to create the hydrangea using Nick's process. And then we'll move on to another one. So I'm using a wire. Um, all of the gauges are actually written down in the book. I want to say this is a 28 gauge florist wire. Now, I believe Katie Sue Designs does sell florist wires on the website as well. Do yes. they not? They do? Yes, they do, yes. So there you go. So I'm using just a little tiny hook at the end of my florist wire. I've used a little pointy nose tweezers. Don't think you see it. Trust me, the little hooks there. I know Nicholas Lodge actually uses a tweezers. I can't get to grips with that, so that's just me. Um, let's have, let's have page gone. Let's just use one of these because we can use this. Now, I'm using straight out of the packet commercial gum paste or flower paste to make these. Okay, so I've got my little bit of paste. Let's give you a bigger piece so you can see why it's gum paste. So gum paste is meant to be able to roll really thin and has stretch to it. So the warmer it gets, the more I work it, the more stretch it will become. Also, if you take a little bit of white vegetable fat, just a smear and knead it in, it's called conditioning the paste. And this conditioning will actually just make it nice and smooth and pliable for you so you won't have any sticking actions, okay? So that's too much paste, but that was fine. On screen, if I was to show you the right size, you'd never see it. Now, in the book that you get from Nick, you will find this absolutely step-by-step, step, every step of the way, all the different sizes, all the way through for everything you will need, okay? Now, he has a measurement for... Um, the little centers. I'm just going to take a pinch and I'm going to roll it onto a cornstarch ball, drop it into the molded piece, then I'm going to take that lovely little companion tool, just give it a little gentle push, and the little push is just there to actually embed it into the rest of the mold. Put that to one side, then I'm going to take my um, hooked wire take a little bit of edible glue. Now some people actually use um, egg white, that's equally as acceptable, depends on what practice you're going to use. You don't want too much, so I tend to wipe the excess off on my thumb. I'll then stand it into the mould, and then because it's a silicone mould, I'll flex the mould around the hook, and then it'll just pop straight out. Now at this point, it will look slightly distorted, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round it out and taper it down the wire. If you find your fingers are sticky, just use a little bit of edible glue on the back, taper it down, take the back off, straighten it up. That will give you your little flower center. Now what I do is I usually make these in advance and then I have a whole pile of them already done. Great way to use up any spare gum paste. Make centers for these. Once they're dry, put them in an airtight, um, not an airtight, uh, dust-free, damp-free box. Let them sit and then you've got them for whenever you need them. Okay, so we'll sit that one to one side. So that's how I do the centers, and as I said, very, very handy way. Now, we're going to look at Nicholas Lodge's size guide here. Now, on the size guide, you will have all different numbers. These are actually the sizes of the hole here. When you watch the video with Nicholas Lodge, he will talk about, um, say, a number seven, and then a number seven small. So if I want a number seven small, Let's take my bit of paste out of here. Let's see if I can make a number seven small. When you roll the ball of paste, if it's a number seven small, that's just too big. If it's a number seven small, it should just go easily through the hole. It's his unique technique of actually there you go. So it drops straight through the hole. That's a number seven small. If you want a regular size number seven, again, I'm using the gum paste as we did before. 
when it actually sits in there it should be one third below and two thirds above. That's probably too small because I can see it's about half and a half. The technique I use is I usually measure the first one, then I keep that ball and then I don't measure again, I just use that as a rough guide from there. So as you can see I've got one third below, two thirds above. So I would then take this piece, set it to one side and then every time I grab a piece of paste I just estimate the size and use that as my guide. So if you're doing production line then that's how I would do it. So let's put that to one side. So, and with every one of the flowers he makes in the book, there will be a size, there will be a weight, or there will be a length that he will have mentioned. And especially on the videos, the tutorials he shows you, you can see what he means. When he says, I need something that's 10 millimeters, he's giving you an accurate measure down the side. So everything you want is in the one kit. It's all there for you. So I'm gonna take my number seven. I've rolled it. I'm gonna roll it into a sausage. This sausage shape, I want it to be roughly the width of two of these petals in the hydrangea. So you can see it's approximately the width. Then I'm going to take that one piece. Where's my little knife gone? <laughs> there you go. Too many bits of equipment. And I'm going to cut that sausage right down the middle. Okay, so I've got two pieces. Now, I want to make sure that my paste doesn't stick in here. So I'm going to take just a soft brush and I'm just going to give it a real light dusting and then tap it back out again. I'm then going to lay one of the sausages into the mold and I'm going to lay the other sausage across so I created a cross shape. Then in true Nicholas Lodge fashion I'm going to take a cosmetic sponge, sponge I'm going to support it in the middle and I'm going to press down around the edges. Now we're trying to keep the bulk of the paste in the middle of the hydrangea and the reason for that is Kate <laughs> you don't know, I, see, she wasn't paying attention. Um, it's because that... Yeah, I didn't even prepare you for that one, did I? The reason we want the outer edges to be thinner is to make it look more realistic, obviously. If we keep the bulk of the paste here in the centre, it's there because it gives more support when this is added to a wire. See, I told you you had to be on guard, <laughs> didn't I? So once I've done that, then I can just flex this and out it pops. So I have one nicely veined hydrangea flower. Now it looks a little flat at this time. So at this point, what I do is I come in, I turn it over and I can use the edge of my companion tool just to thin out the edges, just to give it a little bit more movement. If you prefer, you can use a ball tool if you're already a flower maker, just to thin out the edges again. This means that when I finish it off, I can give it a little more movement. I then take the ball end of my companion tool and I countersink the center. Now, previously it already had a center, so if I didn't want to wire them, Kate, I could just make these and stick them directly onto a cake. You've got a totally edible confectionery embellishment, no problems at all. Because I want to put a center into it, I've countersunk that. I then go take a little bit of edible glue, just put a little bit in the middle. I don't want too much edible glue. It doesn't take much to stick them. I've got one of my pre-dried flower centers, push it in, put it all the way down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from behind and give it a bit of a pinch around just to secure it to that wire. Then come in and give these petals a little bit of an attitude. So do you recommend using a dry centerpiece? Oh yes, when you're doing this? because if you don't it'll come straight off the end. Right. Even though it's got a little hook in it, yes. As I said, I make them in advance. It doesn't take more than an hour for the center to dry, but yeah. to be honest, if I'm making centers, I might as well have a production liner, yes. put a good TV show on, and just make two or three hundred of them. And then, as I said, once they're dried like this, I can keep them in a box for months and yes. months and months. And usually, I make my hydrangea centers pale green, pale lilac, pale blue, or white. Those are your normal ones. Yeah. Even if the center of your flower isn't the exact color, you can always dust it. Yeah. Okay. So once I've now got that hydrangea on there, I will then turn this upside down, put a little bit of a hook in the back, and hang it from something. I've got Kerry's sturdy mug tree here. So, and as you can see, once they're done, these were done about an hour ago, they're firm to the touch. I would probably leave them for a couple of hours and they're fine. You could then go in and dust them whatever color you wish. And then if you group them together, that's when you'll actually see them come to life. So, so a little bit of a tidy up here, because Kerry's been messy. 
I don't so know if who... you have any questions, guys, just uh, comment on the Facebook. I won't answer them. You can <laughs> comment all you like. So I'll just check this now. <laughs> I've got any questions. Yay, yeah, go and see, see who's watching me. So, um, then what I would do is, with the hydrangea sense I've made, if I take one look at Nicholas Lodge's here, Nicholas Lodge on this one has actually gone in, he's pearlized the green ones. I'm not sure how close I can get to the camera without it distorting. He's pearlized them and actually hit them with a little bit of green on the edge just to bring them to life. If you, and that would just be classed for me as a filler flower for a small arrangement or spray. If, however, I wanted to group them together, as you can see here, I've grouped them together and this is where I put some of the leaves in which we'll show you in a minute. This is just a posy of hydrangeas. That could be a little flower girl's posy. It could go onto a bit of air dry clay maybe and be an adornment for a home decor piece. This piece is a lovely little piece in its own. A couple of clusters on this of a cake and it's done. For example, if I had the center of my cake and it had the quilting mold on, if I sat that onto the top of it, it would finish it off perfectly. So just a really handy bit of kit. And again, you can make the hydrangeas and don't have to wire them together. Let them dry, put them in a box, make sure they're dust free and damp free. And you've got them now as a filler flower for as we go on. Did we have any questions? Yes. Someone's asking if they can buy this in Australia. Um, if you buy it on the UK site and then- um, It gets shipped. Yeah, it gets shipped. I'm not sure it's going to get to Australia in time, is it? Not, maybe not for Christmas, I wouldn't not say Christmas, so. sorry. Unless Australia wants to move Christmas. They're very <laughs> modern thinking, Australia. I used to live in Sydney, believe me, they're modern thinking. So, yeah, um, it is available anywhere in the world. Yes. It just depends on which site you've ordered it from as to the duration of the shipping. Yeah. As we said, um, stock is limited in America. Yes but it's pretty much unlimited here because this is where we make it. <laughs> so, but the thing is you then got to do the conversion rate from Australian dollars to British pounds and work all that out. But yes, yes it is available guys. It is definitely available for you. So, are we done with that? Yay! Yes. Oh, happy, happy, it's Christmas. Yes. Yay! Oh, bless. Yay. I'm picking on her terribly. It's only the second time I'm like, you weren't warned, were you? What about, about you? About me, no, you weren't warned at all, I can tell. So, let's look on. So, we've done, we did hydrangeas from the filler flower mold. As I said, take a look at the samples that have been done. Look at the Flower Pro group. Look at the tutorials that have been created. Just look through the website. There are so many things done yeah. with this mold. It is such a clever little mold. How am I doing for time? Oh my God, seven minutes past. <laughs> right, let's now look at the leaf mold. Okay, multi -vainer. Now, for this one... Um, I use a veining board to start off, but I will show you another method. So, this is a veining board. It's got grooves in it, so it means when I roll out my paste, I actually have a bit of a groove in there as well. And I use generic um, rose leaf cutters. They could be any leaf cutters you choose. Those just happen to be the ones that I bought with me today, because obviously I'm doing roses, so let's stick with roses. So someone's asked uh, where to get your mug holder from. Mug Thing. holder? What mug holder? <laughs> Your flower holder. I think I picked that up in a charity <laughs> shop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I think actually that might have been a cutlery holder thinking about it. If you look at it, it might have once held cutlery. Right. Yeah, I think. I yeah. don't know how, but okay. <laughs> um, basically anything that hangs. I yeah. mean, if you've got a craft room or a workshop and you've got shelves in it, why not hang upside down a bit of bit of a grill or a yeah. bit of mesh or I mean when I started out we used to have like washing lines and hang them on there anything that's thin and can hang stuff on I mean it's, yeah. it's not rocket science it's is it? yeah, yeah just yeah. find something that works it doesn't necessarily have to be the right yes. thing I mean there are flower stands out there for drying stuff but to be honest with you look around the house yeah might be surprised another one that I've used in the past is Sometimes you can get something, you know, you have kitchen cupboards that are quite deep. Mm -hmm. You can get shelves that you can put into them that are expandable and they're made of chrome and they've got yeah. rings on. One of those is perfectly fine. Set it down, hang your flowers from the underneath of it. There's lots of different ways, guys. Just be creative. Be creative. <laughs> so I'm taking a piece of um, my gum paste or flower paste, rolling it into a bit of a sausage or a log. Now, on the grooved board, and I will show you two methods of doing this. I'm going to put a little bit of white vegetable fat because I don't want it to move around when it's on there. I'm going to press this in with my thumb or my fingers, a little bit of cornstarch on top, 
probably using the biggest rolling pin in the world. There you go. And I'm just going to roll this down and I'm rolling it until I can just about see a ridge coming through. I'm not sure the lights will show you that. But when you have one of these groove boards, you will see that you can just about see a ridge here. It's as if it's almost transparent. Then I peel the paste off, turn it over, and then I cut my leaf right down the middle, give it a bit of a jiggle, take it off, and then that will give me the vein I want to put my wire into, which I'll be doing in a moment for you. Quite quickly, let's show you a technique if you don't have a veining tool, a veining board. If you roll out a piece of paste, again, press it down. Where's my white vegetable fat? Look at my white vegetable fat. You can roll this out and then work from the center and roll outwards. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to leave a channel down the middle. So you're thinning the paste all the way along except this center. But you can see on screen there's a bit of a mound in the middle. That's where my wire will go to. Now you could use a really small rolling pin. I don't think I've got one I was looking for. Or let's use a paintbrush. I could use a paintbrush and actually thin it down even further. So as you can see, you can work your way at that. Just tidy that up a bit more. And then once you've done that and you lift that one off, you can then take your leaf, cut it out, and then you have a vein down the middle as well. So that's the two different versions. But to be honest with you, one of these boards is pretty handy out there. So it's one of, one of the bits of my kit. So let's put that in there, turn it around, get rid of it. So we're now going to add a wire to this. Now again, I think this is a 28 gauge wire that Nicholas uses. Depending on the size of the leaf will depend on the size of the gauge of the wire you want. I hold this between my finger and my thumb gently. I dip the end of my wire into my egg white or into my edible glue and then I thread this in. Now I'm using what's called a drilling action. So I'm turning the wire as I insert it and you'll feel between your finger and thumb as it goes up inside the leaf. Now it's come all the way up to about here. I would say three quarters is far enough for this. So let me just tap a little bit of cornstarch on there just so it doesn't stick to anything. So when it comes to the mold itself, if I put a load of cornstarch on there or corn flour like that, what you're gonna do is fill up the detail. So yes, by all means do that, but then come in and brush off the excess. Line the wire up so the tip of the leaf needs to be at the tip of the point and the groove or channel is already there for you. So I just secure it in. If I fold this over and then give it one good press, when I open it up, let the flexibility of the mold take it out for you. And then I can just give this a bit of attitude and that will give me my leaf shape. Or should I so choose, I can turn it upside down onto a flower pad and then taking my ball tool, if I gently run my ball tool around the edge, it will thin the edges of the leaf slightly, give it a little more movement, pinch the end, and you will end up with something that looks really quite realistic. So I would then sit stand this in something to dry, leave it for probably about half an hour it can be worked with. If not, you could leave it for overnight. So here's one that dried earlier, complete moment. And this would be the same leaf. And what I've done here is I've actually dusted it with food dust colors and then I've glazed it. I've passed it through some steam. You can use an aerosol edible glaze just to give it that bit of sheen. And then that leaf could be a leaf on its own. It could be grouped in threes or fives to give you the effect of actually making a rose leaf. Or this is the same leaf that I actually used when I looked at the hydrangea. That's the leaf that was hidden in there. So it's a generic leaf veiner, very handy if you just want leaves to fill in spaces. Now, let's put that by, let's get rid of that. Katie's so picky that I keep tidy, I tell you. <laughs> so, right, now, um, so that again, perfect mold, any size cutter, as long as it fits within the parameters of this mold will work. So let's pop that one there. Now. When it comes to the fern veiner, I'm not going to demonstrate this one or we'll be here all day with all of the ones I'm trying to demonstrate. It's very much a similar thing. You end up putting the uh, paste onto your wire. It's a cone shape going in and push it like I did with the hydrangea. You can actually push it in from the back. Um, when it comes to the larger two, I believe, you push it 
push the paste in, then you take it out, and then you thread the wire in afterwards. Because of all the detail in here, it'd be very difficult to do the large one with wire in place. You will then end up with beautiful detailed detailed pieces of fern and all the way down to the smaller ones which could be used oops, used individually or you can actually line them up down the sides which is how they were designed to be so you can create a vein of fern any size that you choose so very handy I mean we've done them in green I think they'd look incredible done in white and done with some shimmer paste so very similar technique as I said it's detailed in the book it's actually Nicholas has shown you um, how to do it on YouTube on a video so lots and lots of instruction to help you very very handy mold as I said very tastefully done very beautiful addition and lots and lots of detail and quite unique I love this mold yeah, yeah so, so all the videos available on ktcdesigns.com slash flower pro so there's quick tutorials there and long ones for everything all just the... if you practice that <laughs> <laughs> so so very very good mold I'm very very happy with that so now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to talk about the rose cone mold. Now we call it a rose cone, but it could actually be a flower center. I've used these for lots of different things. I mean, if you use them as, as they are, you can use them for roses. You can use them for closed peonies. If you were actually to use this and then cut the top off, you could put stamens in and then use it for an English rose or a garden variety rose that you'd see the stems in the middle. You could even use this for other flowers that I maybe haven't got around to doing yet. So I've definitely used them for peonies. So let's take a quick look. Let's come back to the book so I can see what size we need to do. Where are we, Nick? For any of you who are not aware, by the way, the person I'm referring to is Chef Nicholas Lodge, who has a school in Atlanta who travels the world as an internationally well-known um, pastry chef and sugar artist. He is the one who actually came to KTC Design and has worked closely with them to develop all of these unique products. And believe me, this is not the end. I mean, recently they launched the Poinsettia, black, poinsettia black currant leaf, oak leaf, and I can't talk about the others, but there's a <laughs> sledge load more coming to you. So this is the perfect thing that you can add to. And everything Nicholas does is actually helping you achieve wonderful looking flowers in sugar for cakes. Also, because I'm a cross crafter, I can do all the same techniques using air drying clay, porcelain clays, to actually do home decor, to do card crafts, even if I just use something as a texture. So say I took this part of the mold, I could push that into paste on a board to create a texture board, or I could push into air drying clay to make the cover of a book and then put a single flower on it. There's lots of uses for these molds. The only thing I would say, however, is if you're using it for sugar, I'd recommend you buy a separate set for air drying clay. Yes. It's not good to cross them over. Um, I'm not sure anyone's going to die, but you don't want to take the chance. There are some toxins <laughs> in some of those yeah, clays that you do not want to contaminate or put anyone in any danger. So have two sets of them. Or maybe have a friend who does air drying and clay work and you do sugar work. When you want to do, just swap the molds over. So anyway, so looking at Nick's stuff here, he does do measurements on this one. I tend not to do measurements on this one, but he does do something to start with that's called a floral bud to start with. So he takes an 18 gauge wire, if I can get it out, an 18 gauge wire. He then takes florist tape. Now, florist tape is actually a tape that if you stretch it, it releases the waxes or the glues within it and becomes sticky. Okay, so that, that's why you'll see me stretching it, or I'll keep tension on it. So I will fold this around the top of my wire. I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not sure how many Nick does. I do eight turns on it. Once I've got to that point, I'm then going to take, where's my pliers gone? Take my pliers, and I'm going to take this and bend it over on itself. I knew I should have bought the other pliers with me. Bend it over on itself, pinch it closed, and then I'm going to continue to wrap it for another five or ten pieces. And what we're doing is we're just giving a piece in the middle to actually secure it in place. And then once I've done that, I will just run the tape down the, down the wire to the base just to finish it off. Now, as you'll see, it's offered a slight angle. 
see it better there. So I tend to come in, I give it a little bit of a tweak so it's actually straight. It looks a bit like a paddle now, a rowboat paddle or a bud as Chef Nicholas would call it. So it should fit within the shape you're using. So obviously if you're going to do the small one you'd need to do a smaller hook. If you're doing the big one you'd probably do a bigger hook. So I'm going to stay with the middle size here. Now where have I put that paste again? There you go. So let's take some paste out of here. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some paste out of this. As I said, Chef Nicholas has a measurement for this. I just eyeball this one, I must be honest. So I take a ball of paste, I'll roll it on my cornstarch puff, and then I'll push it into the mould and press it. I couldn't have done that better if I'd have tried. That's absolutely perfect. Who needs to measure? I got it right first time. <laughs> That was a fluke, people. That's never happened before in my life. So once I've got it in the mould there, I'm going to take my floral bud and I'm going to take a little bit of my edible glue or if it was going to be egg white, I would brush it onto the one side in this case. I turn it over, I insert it into the groove and I give it a bit of a push down. And as you can see, it pops straight out. Now, you can do all of the halves and set them to one side to dry and then do the opposite side or you can do what I'm about to do so I'm going to set that to one side while I'm working I'm now going to take more paste a little bit if it's a bit firm as this one's a little bit firm come in and just put a little bit of white vegetable fat into it just to condition the paste a little firm more roll it into a small ball roll it on my cornstarch puff put it in and press it in I don't believe it. I've done it twice. <laughs> I'm buying a lottery <laughs> ticket today. Seriously, people, that doesn't happen for if me. If you were to measure them, how would you measure them? Um, I believe Nicholas has either a weight or he has a size. Da, 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 da. Well, if not, there's loads of um, tutorials on this on the Flower Pro. Okay. Um, the cone for the large is a number 11. The cone for the medium is a number 8 small. Remember, small means it just drops through the hole in the size guide so I'd be using a number eight and the ball would just drop straight through and the small one is actually a number seven small so it would be a number seven ball that just drops through you're getting pushy now you know that's <laughs> asking me questions so right now what I've done here is now if this was dried for a couple of hours I do the same process but is it still not dry you have to be a little more cautious glue on it line it up push the two halves together and let it pop out or it would pop out if I'd have pushed it together so ideally would you be doing this when they're dry sticking them together? Um, I tend to do half half of them and then come back in an hour or two and do the other half because I can now just form this into the cone shape sit this to one side I definitely wouldn't use this for 24 hours now because if you start working on a cone when it's soft it's going to come off your wire now just as an example I would actually make them ahead, which I've made them here. That's the large, that's the medium you've just seen me do, and that's the small. Now, the one thing you're going to get hung up on is you're going to go, oh, I can see the seam, it's not perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect, people. You are covering it with paste. What it needs to be is the central form for your flower, and it's the right shape. It's got that cup to it, and that's what you're looking for when you're doing a rose. You want something that will help you. So, I'm going to stick with the medium one because I plan things ahead. Um, and the others, as I did with hydrangea centers, if I've got any spare paste, I could make this out of any color whatsoever because it's gonna be completely concealed when I put the rose on it. The one thing I would be aware of, however, is if you plan to make white roses, and this is made with red gum paste, there's a real good chance that you're probably going to see yeah. the red come through. So use paler color pastes for paler color flowers and darker color paste for the darker ones but you'll find when you start making gum paste flowers or if you're making air dried clay flowers you'll find there's always little bits that are left in your packet and you'll end up throwing them out make them into something make them into cone centers make them into hydrangea centers then they're just in a box they're there for you when you want to use them so let's put that to one side so let's move back to here right now the the cutter I'm going to use with this, because this is the middle size cone, this is meant to be with, I believe, where is it, a 90 
um, millimeter or nine centimeter um, five petal cutter. Now there are umpteen different brands of these on the market. You may already have some, I believe, have you still got these on the site? Another Not question sure. I did later. Sure. Um, we did have some on the KTC website. I can't guarantee at the moment because I've only just arrived here last night, so I don't know what the stock levels are. If not, they are readily available. You've probably already got them, guys, to be honest. So I'm using gum paste or flower paste again. I'm not naming brands here because around the world there are so many different brands that you could use. So let's just do this. So when you roll out gum paste for flowers, the nature of the paste is you can roll it really, really, really thinly. So you could almost read a newspaper through it. So it depends on your level of expertise. You can roll it really thin or at least thin enough. So make sure it moves around. I'm using cornstarch here or corn flour just to move it around. I'm going to position my cutter on, put my finger in the middle and then press around the edges just to make sure it's fully, fully cut through. Then I will take the paste away, holding the cutter in place, and then I'll give the cutter a bit of a rub around. And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to get these pieces here so I can see them. If you can't see them, you can always rub them with the pad of your thumb just to make sure you get a nice clean cut, and then just drop, drop them back out. Out you come. So you're looking to create a five petal shape. Let's put that by. When you're not using your gum paste, guys, make sure you cover it up. It will want to dry out and it will want to dry out very, very, very quickly. So someone's just asked if they can buy um, the book, which is available uh, on the website. Yes, it's available yes. independent. But um, if you buy it in the kit, you get the, the saving. Ooh, more savings. <laughs> so now, let's take that out of there. Now, this is where the beauty of this veiner comes in because we're going to be doing five petal vein, uh, five petal flowers. There's a technique. So layer one is petal one, three, five, two, four. Layer two is one, three, two, four, five. I will do this for you so it'll make more sense, but know that you don't have to remember it. It's written down for you. Okay. And if you lose the mold, you've lost the instructions. It's not like the instructions are on a bit of paper and you lose the instructions. It's there. You're not going to lose them all. So there you go. So I'm then going to take my piece of paste and make sure that there's some dust on here, cornstarch on here. Then line this up to the best of your abilities. I tend to use the points as the indents. If you give it a slight press in the middle, you'll see an indent where the hole is. If it's not perfectly in the middle, just move it around till it is. Then I hold the tab at the top in line with the other tab, lay it on top. Now, I use a cake board. You could use a coaster, you could use whatever you want, just to get a good even pressure on the veining. And then when you peel it back, and you pop it out, it's veined on both sides for you. Now, if you've rolled your paste too thick, you may find that two of these petals stick together. The best thing to do is to actually take a little knife and just run it down there, or maybe use some sort of plastic modeling tool and just run it down there, just so that they actually stay separate to each other. Once we've done that, turn this over and you can use the back of the veiner for the next step. I tend to use a balling tool and I just go around the outer edge. My balling tool is half on, half off the paste. And all I'm doing is thinning down the edge of these petals just to give the illusion that the paste petal is thinner than it appears because I need it slightly thicker to hold up to the structure it's going to be in. So if I flip that over, I've thinned all of those edges. Now, Depend on which half you want to put it on. I tend to keep it on this one because the petals are actually numbered here. So again, line this up. Try and find your center, which is, oh, not a bad guess. There you go. Then I take my cone. I'll take a little bit of, let's use that brush instead, a little bit of edible glue. I tend to paint the cone making sure I've got the base. I'm not using a lot of edible glue because the more liquid you put on here, the softer the center of the rose is, the longer it's going to take to actually dry. So put that down, lift up the entire mold and thread your wire directly through the middle and give it a slight pull down. Now, because 
this is totally dry it's very unlikely you're going to pull it out unless you're katie who's very yeah. heavy hand and just <laughs> yank it on the bottom no matter what yeah what? so this wouldn't work if it wasn't dry no well you could but you're going to have to be a bit tenure yes. about it and the thing is if you've made them advanced you want them to be made in advance and nice and strong for you so i'm going to put a little bit of edible glue on this one let's turn it because i've got that should be that one let me turn this around i've done number two when i should have done number one so i'm going to use somebody at the door <laughs> use the companion tool just to lift it up so I don't I don't annihilate this with my fingers. I'm then going to wrap it around, as you can see, and I'm going to make sure that that's tucked in really, really nicely, and then wrap it around the opposite direction. Once I've done that, I'm going to put a little bit of edible glue at the bottom here, just to secure that paste in place. Now, what you want to try and do is get the center of that as tight as possible. So I'm going to come in, I'm just going to use the end of the companion tool just to tuck this in really really nicely now that's petal number one next petal is number three so it's three and five so that's one three and five your next petals I tend to take a little bit of edible glue and I just put it up one side of each of the petals I don't do the whole petal glue I just lift it up and what whoops I lift it up and I want it to stick and the glued side gets wrapped around the center. I then take the other side and wrap it in the opposite direction. So how do you know to do one and three rather than Because it's written on the two. side, it's written on the... In the book? On, on here. All oh, right. It's already written there. Oh, I see. So it's actually on the mat itself. So as you can see, I've created sort of a propeller shape here once that's in place, I'll then gently coax it round on itself to wrap around the center. And then a little bit of edible glue once again, just to secure it. A little bit of edible glue. I've just broken one off. See, this is because I'm talking. And then once I've got that in place, again, I use the companion tool just to tuck the ends in. Nice and secure. Then again, I'm going to get the last two, which, where's number one gone? Um, this is number two and number four. And again, I'm going to lift these up, glue them into place, glue them into place. And as you can see, I'm beginning to create the center of my rows. A little bit of edible glue there. A little bit of edible glue there. Now, at this point, I can take it off my um, wire support and I can do a little bit of work in placing the petals where I want them. Once they're placed, just round off the bottom edge. Spend a little bit of time just manipulating and getting the center of that rose really nicely tightly wrapped. Then I'm going to put that to one side and then pull out another piece of paste. Now, total magic moment, <laughs> or it would be if I could find them. Here's some I made earlier. Once I made earlier. <laughs> now I've done this purely because you don't need to see me roll out every time but it's a very good example that if you're doing lots of roses you can roll them out and put them into a plastic bag and they're not going to dry on you. So once again I take my central veining piece, put this on, find the center, that's the top half, put the top half on, Give it a good press to get the veining across, pop it off, flip it over, then using my balling tool, thin this down, flip it back over, position it again centrally, there you go, and then where's my flower again? Now this time again I'm going to come in from the bottom and I'm going to put a little bit of edible glue just so it all holds in place. Now this time when I pull it through, what I want is these joins don't need to line up with these joins. So what I want is that join is going to sit into the middle of one of the existing petals, as you can see. Otherwise, the petals will go all over the place. Now when it comes to layer two, it's going to be number one, number three, number two, four, and five. Okay, as I said, it's all written down there for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this one up, 
That's number one. I'm going to put number three. Bring number three up and in place. Now it's being supported so I can actually work on this without any problems it flopping down. There you go. And then we're going to do the final three on here. Again, I'm gluing one side only. And I'm coming up, putting them in place. Now, once they're all stuck this much, I can take them off here and then just work independently. Once all of the petals are glued in place, spend a little time, even out the bottom, if your fingers are sticky, cornstarch on them, and then you can come in and start curling these petals back to give them a little bit more lifelike attitude. Now, if you were just doing a bud, you would just do the first size. If you're doing a medium sized rose, this is where you would stop, or you just keep adding and adding layers. I would recommend if you're going to add more than three or four layers, you're going to have to start hanging the rose upside down to dry just so that it doesn't fall to pieces on you. But as you can see, you can work around, build it up, and put that to one side and just show you a little bit of an example. This is one, one I did earlier. <laughs> this is one that I've done, and as you can see, I've used the leaves. I've used the hydrangeas, on this I've dusted it, and these here, these are actually the centers for the lavenders. And what I've done is I've created little flower florets using the filler flower mold, and these have just innocently been tucked in. So as you can see, they make a great little accent piece, a great little place to put color. So, if again I was to lay that onto a cake, that's the sort of effect you would get. A beautiful, beautiful finish. So, and all this and much, much more is achievable with the Flower Pro set. So one more time, Katie, yes. what, what are we looking at? So Flower Pro Ultimate Collection, it's um, £75 on the UK shop and $89 on the US. Um, so there's a saving on both the UK and the US ones. Um, and it has everything you need um, to create this that you've and, just and especially with the American one um, order quickly because I said yes. there are limited stock if it's ordered and the stock is there you will get it by Christmas if you really want it and there's no reason why you wouldn't really want it then drop um, customer service or info at katiesuitdesigns.com yes. score <laughs> um, and drop them an email and you'll get a notification or they'll let you know when the expected stocks are meant to be there. But to be honest with you, we're having real trouble keeping the stock in America because it's so popular, it's yeah. so clever and handy. It's flying out the door. So hopefully you like the quilting mold and I've shown you now how I do the square or a cube. That could be a rectangle, remember. You need to make sure the corners give you that square edge and that the points are equal on both sides. That will give you the remedy for doing a square if you don't want to do a round. Obviously, it can be enhanced with dusts, um, sugar dragées, small blossoms, or just nothing at all. <laughs> or you could vintage it just by putting some bronze powders or something. Go maybe very steampunk, do it in chocolate brown with some little cogs tapped into it. Anything like that. So that was the continuous quilting mold. And the Flower Pro range, perfect gift for someone who's starting out. Yes, Absolutely definitely. perfect. Yes. And for those of you who have been doing it for years, you know what? If you've got a one-hit wonder, just order it. Yes. Uh, just, just to have the fern alone. And as Katie was telling you, basically when you look at the saving on this, you're getting the fern mold as the free item. Mm -hmm. Yes. But and I've heard a lot of... It's valuable. It's really valuable. Yes. And people that are already well experienced in flower making, I've heard them say that it speeds, speeds the process oh, up yes. massively. Yeah. And the thing is, I mean, we as cake decorators and sugar flower makers are trying all the time to make the best we can but to be honest with you making botanically correct flowers is fabulous if you're competing fabulous if you're doing books or magazines but if you like me and a commercial decorator and you want to actually do cakes for cash or you don't have all the hours in the day to do it this is a great way to go you know bang I've done it I don't need to hunt for this vein or that vein or that I've got one that does it all great way of utilizing any spare gun paste instead of leaving it in a little box and letting it go dry and then you throw it out in two mm -hmm. months 
turn it into something, people. Make it into rose cone centers. Make it into hydrangea centers. You've got green, sit down and just make generic leaves. I mean, I hate making foliage, but this has sped my foliage making up so much. I'm like, yeah, I can watch TV and do this. <laughs> it's simple, 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 but it's a clever system. And as I did say, fabulous book written by Chef Nicholas Lodge. Katie Sue Design has spent a lot of time making sure you have detailed, yes. in-depth, close-up video footage. So if you're getting stuck, believe me, between the book and the footage, there's no way you're not going to get unstuck. Okay, guys? So hand on heart, I would say perfect gift to someone. Yes. If not, why not buy it for yourself? <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, Katie, it was lovely working with you. Yes, you too. I'm not yeah. sure we'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so you will see us again at some point, guys. Um, happy holidays to everyone. Yes. Have fun from here at Katie Sue Designs. And just be creative. Have fun with everything. Bye-bye now. Bye.